Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we're going to talk about try or implement try prefix tree. We'll use Leaco problem 208 to help us go through this problem because since Leaco has a lot of wonderful corner cases in its code base, so we can use this to make sure that our code is correct. But actually, this try is a very common and very useful data structure. It has a lot of very practical use. For example, if we just go to Google and type say T R R I E. All of these, you see, when we type TRI, it's autocomplete, trip advisor, triple red, trivago. All of these, all of these things is autocomplete. How this is implemented, most likely a very efficient algorithm that's backing this Google search is try. And when it comes to string comparison, it's a super efficient data structure that can streamline your process a lot. It saves a lot of space and time. So try is basically a tree with a special node. It's not a regular binary tree node. Instead, we have a node called try node. We only need two fields. One is a Boolean variable. We drastically simplified this for the purpose of understanding this try data structure. In real world, it's much more complex, but we won't go there. This video is just to help us to understand the concept. And another, I'm just simplifying this using an array. Of course, you can use a, a map or like a hash map so that we can accommodate Unicode. That's fine. But for this for this video, I'm just going to assume everything is in uppercase letters, so only 26, or you can put 255. That's fine too. But I'm going to use an array to represent this. The type of this array is trinode. So how do we construct a tri tree? First, we initialize a now as its root node, which is a very typical and standard way to initialize a try node. Suppose we want to insert app app, this word, this is one word, into this, this try node, beginning with an empty try tree. How can we achieve this? So first we initialize an empty tree node. Is word is going to be false. There is no word here. It's an empty array in this root node. We will go through every single character in this given word one at a time. We try to find it. If we have this one in this try node level, then we are fine. If it doesn't have it, we'll just insert it into this try node. So the first character that we're going to insert is A because this is an empty one. This is the first word that we're going to insert into this try tree. A. So we initialize a new try node, this try node. And is word is going to be false. I'm just going to ignore it here. And try node, it's empty. It doesn't have any children yet, right? So we initialize a try node with the value of A. That's the only character that it has at the moment. Next, we do the same. We initialize a, another try node, but this one is one of the children, is the only children at the moment of the try node with value A. Still, is word is false for this try node. So we're going to continue to ignore that in this try node. Then we move on to the third character, which is P. So we'll initialize a new try node with the value P in here. And then this P is children of this P, meaning it's following this. The order goes from the root all the way to the leaf. But at this point, we need to do one more thing. We need to set the value of is word to be true because this is the ending character of this entire word. So we'll just put a subscript of this word, just call it W. W means it's a word, it's a valid word, it's an ending character in this word. All right, we have finished inserting this entire word into this try note. How about we want to insert one more word, apple. We want to insert apple, A-P-P. These three characters, we have these three characters in our try tree already. So what do we do? We don't need to create a new try node because we have like for the first level, we have A here. For the second level, we have P here. For the third level, we still have P here. So we don't need to create any new try nodes in these first three levels. However, for the fourth character, we still do need to create a new try node with the value of L, which should be the child of this P. This is not the ending character of this word. So we'll continue to create one more try node with value E. So E is here and E we need to mark a subscript of W here, which meaning this is E's word is going to be true because E is the ending character of this word that we are trying to insert. All right, then we have finished inserting Apple. 
This is the second word that we inserted into this try node. Let's go through a few more examples. Fisher. Let's try to insert Fisher. So this is a completely new word. F is first character. We don't have F in the first level, so we need to add this F into the first level of this try node. Meaning, the all of these are children of this root node. Previously, the only child that this root node has was A. F is another child we need to add into the children array of the root node. All right, next one. Continue to do the same for F I create a new one S H E R. All of these we we'll need to create because at second level, third level, etc. All of these following levels we don't have the corresponding characters, right? So we need to create all of these following levels of trinodes to have this feature, this word inserted into this trinode. All right, this is the. Third one. Let's go through one more. Let's insert coder. So the first character of this word to be inserted is C. So C is a new word in the first level, right? Prior to this point, it used to have only A and F. C doesn't exist in the first level, so we need to insert character C into the first level. Then we'll continue. O D E R, right? O. We don't have it. We create a new one. D E R. All of these we don't have at the subsequent levels, so we need to create new trinodes. Remember, we need to mark R as the ending keyword. W just is standing for is word is going to be marked as true. Same as for R. W subscript meaning is word is going to be marked as true. All right, that's the coder. This word we have successfully inserted into this trinode. Let's go through April. How do we insert April? Into this tri tree, the current tri tree. A is fine. We don't need to insert it. And second character P is also fine. We don't need to insert it. But for the third character R, we need to insert it, right? Because the third level here it only has P, so we need to create R here. A new character needs to be added. Then moving on from here, R next one is I. So we need I here and L. L needs to be marked as ending character for this entire word. Now we have April. You see, we don't need to create a new A and P, but from the third level, we need to add R, and then moving on, we create a new trinodes. This is how we can insert April. The last word I want to show is cat. At the first level, we do have it, but the second character, which is A, we don't have it. So we need to create an A. A is created. And T, it doesn't exist. We need to create T as well and mark T as the ending character for this entire word. So C A T cat. This word is inserted into this tri tree. All right, that's basically how tri tree really works. The reason why this tri tree is very popular and it's it has a lot of practical use is that it's really efficient in terms of both space and Time complexity. You see, for space, we don't need to store every single string exactly n times. We break every single string into each character, and for each character, if it's a duplicate, we store it only once. Time complexity. Let's think about what's the lookup time. Say, if you want to store the entire Oxford Dictionary into your computer, tri tree is absolutely the way to go. And when you do a lookup. How does Google perform the autocomplete when you type something into Google? Right? Lookup time for try tree is super efficient. Why? Suppose the length of the word that you are trying to find in the dictionary in the try tree is w. Say this one, c a t. The length of the this word is three. So the lookup time is going to be o w instead of the total number of strings that you have in this entire dictionary. Why it's o w? Because at each level. We only check once. The time complexity. We need to find this character is O1. So we do this only W times, and then we can determine whether this word does exist in this tri tree or in this dictionary. So it's super efficient. Again, I'm simplifying this here. I'm just using an array of tri nodes. Ideally, if you want to include Unicode or more complex data structures, you can use a hash map here, which is basically keeping a mapping relationship. Between the parent node and its next level. That's all it does. Now let's put this idea into the code. Here is the lead code problem. Again, the reason I'm using this lead code problem, it has a lot of very great test cases to make sure that we are writing the correct logical code. All right. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a try node uh, class. Here uh, we only need two fields. Boolean is word. And another one is try node. We'll call it children. 
here. A uh, new try node. And we're just instantiated to be 26. Again, we assume everything is upper or lowercase alphabetical letters. So just to simplify this. And this is what this problem is asking. OK, it's all lowercase letters. So we just simplify this to be 26. And we'll have a constructor. Do we need it? No, we might not need it. It's just uh, we'll just leave it empty there. All right. Inside this try class, we'll have a try node. First one is root. And inside this constructor, we just we just need to initialize a, an empty node. That's it. We don't need to do anything else. Now we need to implement these three methods. First one is insert. Remember how we went through insertion. So we go through this, this word, one character at a time. So that's what we're going to do for int i smaller than from zero all the way through i plus plus. So we check at every single level, does this try node have this character? If it doesn't, then we'll just create it. If it does, we'll just move on, assign it to this node. So first, we need one node to let us go through. So we'll just call it node. And then first one is root, of course. And then here, what we'll have is first we'll check if node children or so we'll check if this character does exist at this level. Word char at basically we get every single character in order from left to right, we check minus a, which is going to give us the index that this character maps to to this children array to see if this one equals now. That means this character doesn't exist at this level of the try tree. So what we will do is we'll create it word char at minus one, we'll just create a new try node, basically to initialize to create this try node object at this level. And then at this point, we'll just assign this new try tree node to this node to let it continue to build up this try tree branch. So next, we'll do is ch child node children word char at i minus a again. This is how we'll branch through at every single level to check and insert every single character that if it doesn't exist, we'll just insert this character into the correct level of this try tree. And then in the end, we will assign this is word to be true before we exit, right? Because we are inserting a correct, a complete word. So in the very last level of this node, we need to mark this is word boolean value to be true. For all of the other levels, we shouldn't mark. By default, it's going to be false. Right. That's for the insert method. Next is search and starts with. These two methods are pretty much very similar. We can quickly write it. First, we we'll also have a temporary node. We'll just call it node start uh, from root. Then we'll have a for loop to go through every single character of this word, which is i zero smaller than word length i plus plus. We go through every single node. So first, children, word char at i a. If this one doesn't exist, then we can just directly return false, right? Because this is a broken link. We don't have this character at, at this level already. There's no point to continue to look further, right? So it, we can just return false here directly. If that's not the case, then we can just continue to search down the levels of this try tree. So we'll move on. Node children and word char at minus a. This is how we are going to move on. So that's the for loop. So with this, if it can finish until it breaks out of this for loop, that means we have, at least we have this entire prefix, we have this entire word in this try tree. So at this point, we have breaked out of this while loop success without directly returning false here. 
then we can just safely return node is word because we are looking for a word we need to make sure that we did have inserted such a word into our try tree to make sure that this word is a valid complete one that's it for this method so if we have implemented this one search method starts with is going to be even simpler right it's the only difference is that we don't need to return node is word here we only need to return true if it didn't break out from here so let's quickly implement that let me try node node root exactly the same for loop uh, this parameter name is different. It's prefix now. Nothing changed. If no children prefix char at i minus a doesn't exist, then we'll just directly return false. Again, we don't need to look even further down the levels. There's no point. Otherwise, we'll continue to level it down node children prefix char char at i minus a then this can lets us to continue to move down the levels of this try tree if it didn't break out and it successfully finished this for loop that means we do have this valid prefix in our try tree so we'll just directly return true that's it this is how we can quickly implement this try tree using java code very straightforward now let me hit run code huh compile error line 20 what is this word char at oh should be minus sign instead of equal run code again accept it and now let me hit submit all right accept it this is the idea of try tree I hope this video does help people better understand how TriTree really works. And I hope I did convey the idea that TriTree is a very useful, practical, and powerful data structure to do string comparison, especially when it comes to autocomplete, addiction, restoring, and searching use cases like this. It's just a wonderful algorithm that you can keep in your toolkit. One day it will come very handy. If this video helps you to understand TriTree, do me a favor and hit the like button. I'm going to really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel um, as we continue to go through a lot of interesting problems, data structures, or AWS problems. That's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one.